When it comes to finding unusual planets, there is quite a long list. Actually, there's an entire playlist of unusual exoplanets somewhere in the description. Some planets are weird for one reason. For example, there are planets that are too big, too small, too dense or not dense enough. Or more recently, we've discovered a planet that was just a little bit too hot. As a matter of fact, hotter than the majority of stars in the entire Milky Way. But today we're going to be talking about another planet. An exoplanet known as 8 Ursa Minoris b that the researchers behind the study in the description have been basically describing as a planet that technically should not exist. A planet that somehow survived something that most planets do not. It somehow managed to survive the destruction by the star. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton. And so today we're going to be discussing this unusual planet, what the scientists believe might have happened here, and basically talk a little bit more about the mystery of a planet with the proper name Hala. It's one of the planets that got lucky enough to receive a proper name. But in order to understand why this planet should not exist, we actually have to talk about the star first. The star that also has a proper name, and the name in this case is Bagdu. Bagdu and Hal, by the way, are the names of two biggest mountains in Korea. One of them is in North Korea, and one of them is in South Korea. And these names were proposed and accepted by the Korean researchers who originally discovered this exoplanet back in 2015. And so what exactly in the star system makes it kind of unusual? So first, the planet itself is not actually that special. It's about 1.3 masses of Jupiter, and it's also slightly bigger than Jupiter as well. It takes about 93 days to orbit around the star, with the orbital radius that's about half the distance of Earth to the Sun. It also has a relatively low eccentricity, or basically the orbit here is very circular, and overall, the scientists refer to this kind of a planet as a warm Jupiter. A gas giant with a relatively hot upper atmosphere, but not hot enough to be considered a hot Jupiter. So definitely intriguing, but not super exciting. But the scientists analyzing this planet then actually wanted to see what the star is like. The star, once again referred to as Bagdu. Now this is an orange dwarf, also known as a K-type star. A star a little bit smaller than our Sun, but a star that seems to be much, much older. And so here, the scientists wanted to find out what stage of the lifetime this star was in. For this, they use a very, very well-known technique that you can learn more about in the description, known as astro-seismology. This is actually a super cool technique, based on the idea of seismology on planet Earth, where essentially by detecting various oscillations in a typical star, it then becomes possible to analyze what's happening on the inside. In some sense, it's like looking at star quakes. And this technique has been developing and improving pretty much every year, mostly based on helioseismology coming from our own Sun. So first by studying the Earth, and then by studying the Sun, it then becomes possible to study other stars. And that's essentially what the scientists in the study decided to do. And the main goal here was to try to figure out how old the star was, and what period of its lifetime it was currently in. Turns out, this was an extremely old star, basically almost at the end of the life cycle. And so by using astro-seismology and looking at frequencies of waves coming from this particular star, it then becomes possible to find out what material the star is currently burning. And turns out that it's currently burning helium. And if the star is burning helium, it means that at some point it must have been much, much bigger. Based on modern research, we believe that helium burning process in these types of stars happens after the red giant stage that must have happened sometime in the past. And for stars like Bagdu, they're expected to reach a certain size when they become red giants. This is actually very similar to what our Sun is going to become in the next 5 to 6 billion years. And so by doing the calculations based on the type of the star, K-type, the researchers determined that it should have actually been at least 0.8 astronomical units in size. Or in other words, it should have covered the star's orbit, completely engulfing the planet in the process. In other words, at some point in the past, this planet should have been inside the red giant star. Yet somehow the planet survived, suggesting that it now entered the next stage. And the challenge here is, of course, how exactly did this planet survive this, and why is it that we're not seeing this more often in other systems? Well, the first, I guess, the obvious question was, well, was this planet even real? Maybe it was some kind of a data glitch and maybe this planet doesn't even exist? Or maybe something else was miscalculated? But turns out, after years of research, this planet has actually been confirmed to exist and seems to be the size and the mass that was originally suggested. The star and its current stage, which is helium burning, has also been confirmed independently. Essentially confirming that there is a planet 
that somehow managed to survive what we usually believe destroys planets. In the end, assuming a relatively circular orbit relatively close to the star. Here, as you can see, the star is actually really large in comparison to the planet. And by the way, in case you're wondering, this particular helium burning stage is most likely going to last for a few million years. Only because this is a K-type star, it might actually last up to 50 million years, so this planet is going to be here for quite some time. Eventually, though, the star is going to release the entire outer shell as a nebula and become a white dwarf. Also, this is not the first planet discovered around a red giant stage, but it seems to be the first so far that's close enough to the star and should have technically been swallowed and destroyed. So definitely an intriguing discovery and definitely a very intriguing mystery. But do we have any potential explanations? Well, at the moment, nothing too concrete and nothing that seems to explain everything. For example, one of the explanations suggests that maybe this used to be a binary system. This could have been two stars that had a planet orbiting very close to them, and eventually these two stars merged, preventing any one of them from expanding large enough, and thus preventing the planet from being absorbed. But by itself, this would be very difficult to prove, and there's really no evidence for any of this happening otherwise. The explanation itself would go as follows. We had two stars with a relatively close orbit, which would eventually start sharing the material, with one of the stars eventually becoming a white dwarf, and then the second star eventually swallowing the white dwarf, becoming the merged star that we see today that seems to have helium ignition that might have begun a little bit prematurely. Now that's a pretty intriguing explanation, but right now there's just not enough evidence. But the other explanation is a little bit more intriguing. The implication here is that maybe this particular planet formed as some kind of a remnant from the material that was expelled from the star, possibly once again because of a collision between two different stars or because of some other violent event. In other words, the suggestion here is that this is a second generation planet. It's a planet that was created at the end of the star system from all of the extra material that used to orbit around the star and got expelled in the process when the star became a red giant. A pretty intriguing explanation, but once again, there is just not enough evidence to prove any of this definitively. And so at least for now, this is going to be one of those exoplanets that's not really going to have a very good explanation for why it exists or why it was able to survive. But we'll definitely come back and talk more about this planet and a lot of other unusual exoplanets in some of the future videos, because in the last few years, there have been quite a few discoveries that are just a little bit too difficult to explain. You can actually find some of them in the list in the description below. And so until future studies that might clarify something, thank you for watching, subscribe, Share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.